everyone. Welcome to the Windows DevBox setup session. My name is Kale Cinnamon, and I'm a program manager on the Windows for Developers team. We're the team who brought you Windows Terminal, Windows Subsystem for Linux, Power Toys, Windows Package Manager, and various improvements to the developer work stream on Windows. We come to work every day striving to make Windows a great place for developers. And today I'm going to show you how you can set up your machine with our great set of developer tools to help you get started with a fantastic development environment. So without further ado, let's get started. So here on my machine, I'm on the Windows Insider program dev channel, which has Windows 11. The first tool I want to use is Windows Package Manager. So I can install Windows Package Manager by getting the app installer from the Microsoft Store and then getting started in my command line from there. So once this is installed, I can go into my terminal and I'm using Windows Terminal, which is now installed by default on Windows 11. And then I can get started using Winget. So the first tool that I want to install is Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to maximize my terminal here, get all set up, and then start typing winget install VS Code. And what this is going to do is I'm going to speed up the installation a bit since this is a demo. And then we're going to get started using VS Code to start changing some settings in winget. So we're going to have this run. And then once this is done installing, I'm going to open the settings. So Winget has a JSON file where you can change all the settings of Winget that are available to you. So I can open that JSON file with Winget settings. And this will open the settings.json file in VS Code. And then I can get started changing the settings that I like for Winget. So you might notice here at the top, there's the schema line. And the schema tells VS Code what settings are available to me. So right here at the top, it's actually referencing the schema from the web. So whenever new settings are added, this will be updated automatically. So what VS Code will do is it will give me a dropdown of recommendations for settings that I can set in my settings file. So my favorite setting that I love to change is the progress bar. So I can start typing, and you'll see this dropdown. This is all the settings I can use. I'll go down to visual. And then once I'm in visual, I'll change the only visual setting, which is the progress bar, and I'm going to set it to rainbow. So I'm going to save this, and then I'll go back into my terminal and install the next tool to get started with my dev setup. So this next tool is Power Toys. It is a fan favorite. We love using it and getting uh, very productive with it on Windows. So I can do that by typing winget install Power Toys. And then I'm actually going to add an argument for the source. So that'll be dash s ms store. So what's really great about Winget is that you can install packages from the Microsoft Store as well as packages from Winget's package library. And you can specify the source by typing dash s or source and then typing ms store or Winget. So once this is installed, we can get started using Paratoys as well. So now I have all my tools installed and I want to be able to export this package or set of packages and put it onto a new machine. I can do that by typing winget export and then dash o for the output file and then I'm just going to set it to packages.json. So winget is going to take all the packages I have installed in this machine, write it in a json file format and then export it into this packages.json file which I can then take and put onto a new machine and run winget import. So here the export function is running, and then I'm going to open that file with code. So typing code packages.json opens that file in VS Code. Then here you can see all the packages that I have installed on the machine here. And then I can take this and run winget import and uh, put it onto a new machine and then get started right away. So I don't have to install each package by hand. I can just export and then import this file in. So winget is open source. So if you'd like to contribute to the CLI, package repository, manifest creator, or the REST-based source, you can do so by heading over to GitHub and checking out those repositories. And if you manage a manifest, we have a new manifest creator that just went GA that you can use to create a manifest for Winget and then get started and uploading your package there. So now that we have everything installed, let's begin customizing our setup, starting with Windows Terminal. So as I mentioned earlier, Windows Terminal is installed by default in Windows 11. Windows Terminal is the new command line experience on Windows, and we are actively working to make it the default experience for all command line applications. So if you're on Windows 10, you can get started with Windows Terminal by installing it from the Microsoft Store, from GitHub, or Winget. And another great option is installing Windows Terminal Preview, which has all of the latest features as soon as we release them. So I'm actually going to open up Windows Terminal Preview and customize it, since that is my preferred terminal. 
So I have it installed here. I can just search for terminal preview and then get started customizing all the settings that I'd like in Windows Terminal. So Windows Terminal is the new command experience. It has tabs, it has panes, it has a bunch of settings that you can customize, and it's really just the new way of the command line here on Windows. So you might notice here at the top of the screen, it says Windows Terminal can be set as the default terminal application in your settings. So we are working to make Windows Terminal the default command line experience on Windows. If you don't wanna wait, you can set Windows Terminal as your default now. So you can do that by opening settings and then heading over to this default terminal application setting. So here I have it set to Windows console host. This is the original host in Windows. I'm going to change that to say Windows Terminal Preview. So now whenever I open any command line application, whether it's Ubuntu or another bash shell or a command prompt, it'll open in Windows Terminal Preview. So I'm going to save this and then I'm actually going to demonstrate it really quickly. So if I hit save, I'll go into my start menu and then I'll search for CMD and launch CMD as I normally would. And then when I open this, it will actually open in a new Windows Terminal Preview window instead of the original console host window. So this is how you can set Windows Terminal by default and this is available on Windows 11. There are a ton of customizations you can do to make Terminal feel like yours. So here are some fun visual settings that I'd like to change to my PowerShell profile. You can modify the opacity of the text buffer. You can modify the background image. So we're gonna do that here. I'm just gonna browse for this night sky image I have in my downloads folder. And I'll also want to make sure that it's fit to the screen properly and it has the proper stretch mode. So that is uniform to fill to make sure it's filling up the entire window. I'm gonna change the opacity of the background image down to about 50 and I'll change the opacity of the window itself as well to get a little transparency down to about 63 and I'll turn acrylic on. So if I hit save here, you should be able to see all of my changes that I've just made in my PowerShell window. I do wanna also change the color scheme. I forgot to do that on the first time. So I'm gonna go in here, change Campbell to one half dark. That is my preferred color scheme that comes in Windows Terminal. And then I'll hit save and we'll be all set to go with a customized terminal. And there's a ton more customization settings you can do here. I just wanted to demonstrate a few of how to get terminal looking nice and fresh really quickly. So Terminal does come with a lot of functionality and is a really powerful terminal. And uh, the first feature that I wanna talk about is Command Palette. So just like VS Code, Windows Terminal has a Command Palette. You can access it by going to the Command Palette in the dropdown, or you can access it by typing Control-Shift-P, just like in Visual Studio Code. So the Command Palette has a bunch of actions that you can take in Terminal. We list every possible command that you can do here in the Command Palette. If you wanna edit these actions or add your own, you can go to the Actions page on the Settings UI, or you could edit the settings.json file and add some settings there too, to add your own actions if you'd like. Another great functionality that we have is split panes. So if I go into the Command Palette and I start looking for split, I can split the Windows Terminal pane and I can specify a profile that I'd like to split. So I'll hit split and then I'll pick my Ubuntu profile and then I can set the direction that I'd like to split it to. I'll just split by automatic split. And then here on the right, I have Ubuntu and then on the left, I still have PowerShell. So this is really handy if you wanna be super productive with many different shells all in one window. And if you hold Alt and then select a profile, you can also split that profile that way as well instead of opening the command palette. If you'd like to close the panes that you've opened, you could type Control-Shift-W and that will close any open panes that you have just so you can keep your pane management under control. So that's split panes and the command palette. The next feature I wanna talk about that we announced last year at Build is Quake Mode. So Quake Mode allows you to access your terminal from anywhere in Windows. You simply type Windows Backtick and a terminal window will drop down from the top of your screen. This comes in handy when you want to run a few quick commands then dismiss the terminal right away. And Quake Mode will automatically use the shell you've set as your default profile when you open it. So one heavily requested feature that is the last feature I'd like to show you in Terminal today is how to open your terminal or your profile as administrator. So a lot of people have been asking, how can I open Terminal automatically as admin? Well, you can do it now in Windows Terminal Preview. So to do this, you're gonna have to edit your settings.json file. So I can get there by going into settings and clicking open JSON file on the bottom left or you can go into the dropdown and select settings and hold shift while you're clicking on settings and that will also open the settings.json file. If you hold alt while clicking on settings, you can get the defaults.json file if you wanna see the default settings that we provide for you. So I'm going to scroll down to my PowerShell profile. This is the profile that I like to set as admin. It has all the customizations here, so it's the largest object. 
And all I have to do is add one line that will set um, elevate to true. So here we also have a JSON schema, just like in Winget. So you'll see the dropdown uh, suggestions that VS Code gives me. I'll hit elevate, and then I'll set that to true. And what this will do is that it'll tell the terminal, hey, I always want to launch as admin um, whenever I'm launched. And this is also my default profile, which makes it um, a little bit more in depth of how a terminal will behave in terms of always being default. So if I launch PowerShell from here, I'll get a new administrative window. And you see the shield on the left, and it says administrator PowerShell. And then every profile that I open here opens as administrator. So this is a admin window, and you can't have mixed elevation. So all tabs will be admin here. All tabs in the first window will be not elevated. Since it's my default profile, terminal will always open as default, or always open as administrator as default, since this is the profile that will always open when you launch terminal. And this is how you can get terminal to always launch as default if you'd like. So Windows Terminal is open source. So if you'd like to contribute to the GitHub repo, it's at Microsoft slash terminal on GitHub. I'm also going to take this elevate line out uh, because I don't want Terminal to be elevated throughout the rest of the session. Um, you can also learn all about Terminal on our docs site at aka.ms slash terminal dash docs. And a lot of our great features are from the community and are from open source. So I highly recommend you check out our repo and file any feature requests or bug fixes or contribute to the code as well. So you may have noticed in my profile list that I have an Ubuntu profile. This is supported by Windows Subsystem for Linux, which lets me use Linux utilities and apps right here on Windows. So if you want to get started with Linux, you can either do it by running wsl-install in your terminal. And that could be either in PowerShell or in Command Prompt and this will install terminal from the command line. You can also specify the distro you'd like to install by adding dash D afterwards and then the distro name, or you can install WSL from the Microsoft Store. So the team has also recently released a preview of WSL inside Microsoft Store. And if you are on the Insider program, you can get the store updates automatically if you install from the command line. And what's great about having WSL in the store is that you'll get updates automatically without having to update Windows itself. So it's a really quick way to get nice features and iterate quickly on the new features that the WSL team ships out. So once you have WSL installed, you can get your distro either from the command line or from the Microsoft store and then get started using WSL. So WSL behaves just like real Linux because it is real Linux. There's a Linux kernel built into Windows that WSL utilizes. So another way that WSL feels like real Linux is through graphical application support. You can run GUI apps using WSL along with your trusty command line apps. So let's actually run Blender, which is a graphical application that will run directly here on Windows. So you can see here, Blender has launched. There's the Linux title bar at the top. It has all the Linux styling, but it's running right here in my taskbar. And what's really cool about running Linux GUI apps on Windows is that Windows knows it's a Linux app and will actually add this little tux icon in front of the application icon to tell you that it is a app running on Linux. And the integration between Windows and Linux is actually really seamless in app launching because when you open the start menu and look for Blender, you'll be able to find Blender listed as a regular application like you would in Windows. And it also has the tux icon there to let you know that it's a Linux app also running on Windows. So that's how some Linux integration on Windows can feel seamless. Going the other way, when you're using Windows applications, you can access your Linux files very quickly and have that integration that way as well. So I'm going to go open the File Explorer. And here on the bottom left, you can see Linux is a top-level menu item. This is where all of my distro files will live. This is where Ubuntu is. And I can easily access my Linux files here in my uh, Windows applications. So as a pro tip to improve performance, make sure to keep all of your project files on the Linux file system rather than crossing over the boundary and having your project communicate between the Windows and Linux sides. If you'd like to learn more about WSL, you can check out the WSL doc site at aka.ms slash WSL. So at this point, we could start developing because we have just about everything set up, but there is one more tool set that I want to call out that I installed at the beginning that adds a lot of functionality to Windows, and that's PowerToys. So I did install uh, PowerToys using Winget from the Microsoft Store, and now I'm going to launch it here and show you some of the great tools that come inside PowerToys. So you can get PowerToys by installing it through the Microsoft Store or from Winget itself or from GitHub. PowerToys is a mini toolkit of features and tools that makes developing on Windows so much more enjoyable. So here are some of my favorite tools that I want to show you. 
So the first one is the File Explorer add-ons, which allow you to preview various file types in File Explorer. So this is the settings window of PowerToys, and you can see all the settings available to you and all the tools available to you and which hotkeys open them. So here for the File Explorer add-ons, I can have a preview window in File Explorer, and it can preview files like SVGs or markdowns or PDFs or C++ files or anything like that. So if I go into my Downloads folder in File Explorer, and then I type Alt-P, this will open the preview window on the right side of File Explorer. And then I can select the JPEG file and see that preview here on the right. And if I want to look at another file, let's say that uh, settings.json file that I opened in VS Code, I can right-click and open in File Explorer here, and then also preview this code in File Explorer as well. So if you're looking through um, some project files and you want to see what's in them, this is a really great way without having to leave File Explorer to see everything that's in those coding files. So here's that JSON here on the right. So this is one of my favorites um, from PowerToys. The next um, toy or tool that I want to talk about is PowerToys Run. PowerToys Run is one of the original toys that came out in PowerToys, and it's been one of my favorites since it's been released. And it's an excellent way to quickly launch the apps that you need. So here you can customize the plugins that are available to you to make your run launch experience that much better. So there's things like calculator or searching files and folders in Windows or navigate inside the Windows registry. Anything like that you can add into PowerToys Run to customize your search and launch experience. So if you want to launch PowerToys Run, you just type Alt space, and then I'm just going to quickly launch Terminal from here and then um, get started using Terminal if that's um, what I'd like to do. So it's a really great launcher as well as having those extra plugins that you can do in addition to just searching. So I'm a big fan of PowerToys Run. And the last tool that I want to show you is Mouse Utilities, which I feel like is maybe underrated, but it's one of my favorites. So Mouse Utilities is really great because if you have a really wide monitor or if you have multi-monitors, you can find your mouse really quickly with these utilities. So the first is the Spotlight feature. If you type uh, left control twice, you'll get that spotlight showing on your mouse, and then you can easily find your mouse, whether you're on a large screen or a small screen, it's really handy. And this is also great for accessibility. If you have a difficult time finding your mouse, this is one way to, uh, to find it quickly. If you want to highlight the clicks that you have or clicks that you do, you can enable the mouse highlighter with Win Shift H, and then when you click, you'll get a yellow highlight. And then the last one at the bottom is the mouse pointer crosshairs, which is another way to help find your mouse on the screen. So PowerToys is open source and it's constantly getting more tools. One announcement we have today is that PowerToys now supports ARM64 devices. If you want to contribute, you can find the GitHub repo at slash Microsoft slash PowerToys. If you want to learn more about PowerToys, check out the doc site at aka.ms slash PowerToys dash docs. So let's recap what we've chatted about. When setting up your Windows machine for development, you can use the Windows Package Manager to install all of your packages. You can use the new powerful Windows Terminal for your command line apps and customize it to your liking. Windows Subsystem for Linux allows you to run Linux apps side by side your Windows ones, giving you the best of both worlds. And lastly, PowerToys has a bunch of awesome utilities that improve the development experience on Windows. I hope you've enjoyed today's session and have learned a bunch about our awesome developer tools. I'll see you next time.